In this video, you learn to make multiple dependent drop-down lists in Excel. And I know that sounds confusing, so let me show you what I mean. By choosing a region here from the drop-down, it's going to influence the countries that are available in the next drop-down. For example, if we choose Europe, we're only going to see the European countries. And if we change this to Asia, it's only the Asian countries that are there. And the same idea goes with the city after that. Once we understand dependent dropdowns, we'll create an advanced scenario where answers auto-populate depending on your choice. And we'll even have a red error check in the case that we have a region that's in Europe and a country that's in Asia, which obviously doesn't make sense. And all of this is actually surprisingly easy to make. Let's take a look. First up, suppose we work for a large company and they have all of these offices available in these regions. And we're gonna go over four examples that are progressively harder, which you can download for free in the video description to follow along. So over here for the region, we first need to create a dropdown for all the region options. And this is quite easy. We just go over to data and click on data validation. From here, you'll get this pop-up that we want a list. And that list is simply going to be all of the different regions. So from E2 all the way to H2 and click on OK. Now you can see that we have all of the regions available. Let's say I just click on Asia. If you want to copy this down, you can simply just drag it along like so. And you can see we get Asia, but for now I'm going to delete all of these options and just stay with the top one. Now based on that, we want to see all of the countries that are in Asia as a drop down, so it would be these three over here. And then when I change this to Europe, it should change to this list right here. For that, the formula that we'll be using is a simple XLOOKUP. So it's equals XLOOKUP, hit the tab key, and the lookup value is we're looking for Europe, comma, and we're looking for Europe within this range up over here, comma, and if there's a match, we wanna see all of the corresponding countries, which are these over here, we can select the entire table there for all the countries and close that parenthesis. So you can see right now for Europe, we get all of this list. And if I were to change this to say Asia, then we get these three up here. That's looking good. And now we need to add that whole X lookup inside of a data validation to make it a drop down. So I'm just going to delete it from here, head over to data validation again. We're going to want to have a list, but this time around, we'll put the X lookup inside. So equals X lookup, open up the parenthesis and we're looking for Asia. So this cell right here, B3, but we want it to move around. So we're actually going to type it manually. So it doesn't get those dollar signs, comma. And where can we find B3? We can find it in this region right here, all of the region options, comma. And then we can try to find the countries within this area right here, which we selected before as well. And you can see these are locked with the dollar sign so they don't move around but we want this one to stay dynamic so it doesn't have any dollars click on okay there now we have the drop down which if we click inside you can see we have japan china and india there if i switch this to let's say north america then all of a sudden my options dynamically change to us canada and mexico awesome so we've now set up a fully dependent drop down list with the region and the country. But what if we also wanted to add another variable like the cities? In this example that we can see here, we have the countries listed and within each country, maybe we have more than one office. So you can see that we have three offices here available for these cities. And so we wanna try to add that as well into our dropdown conditions. That's gonna work in a very similar way. So we'll click on data validation again, and we're gonna want a list. And that list is going to be an X lookup again. So equals X lookup, open up the parenthesis. And now it's not region, but country that we're looking at. So it's going to be the C3 comma. And we want to find that C3 within the range of countries. This time it's vertical as opposed to horizontal, like the previous example. So we'll select all of the countries there comma. And for the answers, it's going to be all of the corresponding cities right next to them. Close the parenthesis and click on OK. Now you can see we're under Asia, Japan, and the options are the three Japanese cities. If I were to change this to, let's say, India, then all of a sudden we get cities in India as three options. Nice. In the next step, we're going to be looking at how to auto-populate 
So it shows certain answers depending on our choices. But before that, if you want to learn Excel fast and efficiently, you can consider checking out our Excel for Business and Finance course. Here, we teach everything we know about Excel, specifically applied to real-world scenarios. While we still cover theoretical lessons like formatting, formulas, and charts, we also offer several case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from financial modeling to cleaning a data set and presenting some visual insights. And if you get stuck along the way, you can always ask us, the course instructors, any questions. We also offer several other courses, including SQL, Power BI, and much more. So head over to the link in the description below to check that out. The examples so far don't tell us that much information. It would be nice to see alongside maybe the name of the country, who the manager is, how much that country is made, etc. And for that, we'll take a look at this example where you can see we have not just the country, but also we have some important, let's say, summary statistics to the side. The idea is that whenever we choose a region from the dropdown and we select a specific country, we want to see all of the corresponding answers there. So right now this part isn't working, so we need to add a data validation again like we did before. Let me fast forward that. Great, so now I have the dropdown for Asia. It's just giving me the Asian countries, so that's looking good. And right below that, we want to make this dynamic as well to auto-populate depending on our answer. And we can do that with the XLOOKUP mixed with another function. So first, we'll take a look at the XLOOKUP here. And we're looking for India, comma. We're looking for India within this whole range over here, which is all of the countries that we have, comma. And with that, we want to get all of these answers. So the revenue, the profit margin, manager, and the contact. We can do those all in one go instead of having to write the formula four times simply by selecting the entire area there and close up parenthesis and hit enter. You'll notice though that this doesn't look quite right and that's because the answers are horizontal as opposed to vertical which is how we want them. So we'll use this function called transpose which basically takes something that's horizontal and turns it into vertical or vice versa. So right here at the very beginning of the XLOOKUP We'll just put a transpose, hit the tab key there, and simply close it at the end. And now we can hit enter. You can see all of the data now looks good. If we take a look at India, you'll see that all of this is the right answer. And if we change this to let's say Japan, everything auto populates as well. One problem you might have noticed with the current drop down list is that the values sometimes stay fixed. If we don't delete the country here, but we change the region from Asia to Europe, then this no longer makes any sense. So to show that this is an error, it would be nice to maybe cross out the value and even highlight it in red. So let's take a look at how to do that. And it's going to combine a few functions. Firstly, we would need to identify all of the countries that are within this region with a simple X lookup like we've done before. So we're looking for all of the countries that are in the region of Europe. So we're selecting Europe within this range over here, and we want it to spill out all of the returning countries in that region. We'll close the parenthesis, that's easy enough. From here, we wanna see if any of these three match to the country. If they don't, then there's obviously a problem. Instead of getting these three values, it would be good to have a true or a false, depending on whether there's an error. And for that, we can put a count ifs here in front, Hit the tab key and the criteria range is fine as is comma and we want to know if that criteria range is equals to the country of japan or whichever country selected here we can close the parenthesis and hit enter so right now we get a zero meaning that it's false but if i were to change this to let's say france which is within that area within this list here then we get a one meaning it's true so now we have this error detector working correctly and we can use it inside our conditional formatting. What we'll do is copy this entire formula with control C there and hit enter. Now we can go inside of the country cell under conditional formatting. So go to the home tab and click on conditional formatting. And we'll go all the way to the bottom where it says new rule here. And within the pop-up, we want to use a formula. This is where we'll paste our formula and after that, we need to say that if this is equals to zero, 
that's when we have the error, right? So that's when we want to change the formatting from what it currently has to something a bit different. Maybe we can go ahead and add a strike through. You can see in the preview what that looks like. We cross it out. We can also change the fill color to let's say a red. And let's also change the font color to a white so it stands out there. Click on OK and click on OK again. So you can see under the region of Europe, France, it's correct. But if we were to change the region to let's say Asia, then all of a sudden France is incorrect. We get that zero and you can see over here that it's being crossed out. Obviously this part we don't need anymore as we copy pasted the formula. But now you can see that it's fully error proof. Awesome. So you can see here conditional formatting is actually quite a flexible tool. So you can learn how to use that even better with this video over here or by taking our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.